Hi everybody, in this lesson we want to look at something called the quadratic maximization problem. So let's look at an example. Uh, it says I recall that total profit, P, is the difference between total revenue and total cost. So if you have so much money coming in and then you subtract off of that whatever your costs are, then that's going to give you the profit. That's how much you'd, you'd earn there. And they give us a function. Uh, the revenue function is 1000x minus x squared and then we have a cost function. 3,000 plus 20x, and we're asked to find the total profit. So I know that my my profit is just going to be the revenue minus my cost. Okay, so I can easily enough do that. I can just plug in my revenue function, 1,000x minus x squared. So there's my revenue function, and if I subtract from that the cost, the cost is given by this formula. 3,000 plus 20x, then that, uh, what that simplifies to, that'll give me my, my profit, right? So let's go ahead and simplify that. 1,000x, oops, need another zero in there, minus x squared, minus 3,000 minus 20x. So, so it looks like my profit is given by this, this formula. I'm going to write it as negative x squared uh, plus 980x minus 3,000. Okay, so right in the descending powers. And then I, I notice that this is a quadratic equation. I also notice that the leading coefficient is negative, and I know that the graph of every quadratic equation is a parabola, and if the leading coefficient is negative, that's going to be opening down. So, so very quickly, in my mind, I have a picture that it's going to look something like this. In fact, just very quick, I could see it. You know, if x was zero, x would be like the uh, the number of units that are sold. Okay, the value of x. Um, over there, it's going to be like negative three thousand here at zero, right? But eventually, it's going to come up, and it's going to look something like this. And there's going to be some point where there's going to be a maximum profit. And that's the point we'd like to find. And of course, since it's a parabola, we know that that profit occurs at the vertex. Now, there's a couple ways that I can find that vertex, actually three ways uh, that you may want to use. The first way, you remember, is you could complete the square. I could uh, go ahead and, and uh, complete the square on this. I could factor that negative out of the x terms, so I'd have a negative quantity x squared minus 980x and then just push the minus 3000 off to the side there. And then to complete the square we take half of that middle term. Now half of 980 is 490. So I'll take that 490 and square it. And I don't know what that is. Oops, not 490 to the 0 power. 490 squared. <coughs> And remember that because this minus out here multiplies that, I'm really subtracting 490 squared. That's what I needed to complete the square. So over here I'm going to add 490 squared to compensate for that. All right. So this is going to give me a negative x minus 490 quantity squared. I know this is a perfect square, so just bring my minus down. I know I'm going to have to square x to get x squared. I know I'm going to have to square 490 to get 490 squared. And if I foiled all this out and took this term times this term and doubled it, sure enough that would give me minus 980x. And then this over here, well let's do that on our calculator. I'd get 490 squared minus 3000. which is 237,100, okay? Okay, so in terms of, <clears throat> of my graph, I know that now this is a parabola that's been shifted 490 units to the right and up 237,100 units. And so when I solve this problem this way by completing the square, I get not only the maximum profit, which is this $237,100, but I also get that it occurs where x is 490. All right. So from that information, we could say the maximum uh, profit is $237,100. Where x is equal to 490. So there's my answer. All right. Now another way I could have gotten that. You'll remember that 
that the vertex is always halfway between the x-intercepts, and the x-intercept is given by the quadratic formula, and in that quadratic formula, there's a negative b over 2a. The negative b over 2a always tells us the vertex point. So another way I could have done this, so let's put a big or right here, or uh, the maximum value occurs at the vertex, which is always at x equals negative b over 2a. So all I have to do, <clears throat> come up here to my profit function, negative 980, my b is 980, 2 times negative 1, my a value is negative 1, and so notice that that, sure enough, is where x is. 980 divided by 2 is 490, right? So there's my x value, and then the maximum profit will be p of 490. All I have to do is plug 490 into the profit function. So whatever a negative 490 squared is, now of course I'll have to square the 490 and then make it minus, so let me put that in parentheses like that, uh, plus 980 times 490 minus 3,000, <clears> and I'll bet it ends up being 237 1100. So let's, let's just double check that. So if I take negative 490 squared plus 980 times 490, so that'll be the 980x, um, minus the 3000, and that gives me, sure enough, $237,100. Now, the final way that you could show this <clears throat> and locate the maximum is to just graph it. Once I have the profit function, I could have just gone to my y equals here and graphed it, which is a negative x squared plus the 980x uh, minus the 3,000. Now, the downside of this is if I just graph it in my standard window, I'm probably not going to get anything. Uh, right, because this is just between, you know, minus 10 and 10. Of course, this is way out here at 490. Hindsight's everything, isn't it? I know the graph is going to look like this. In fact, <clears throat> many students wonder, well, how do I know what window to use? Well, the reality is oftentimes you know what the window is because you've already worked the math ahead of time like this. So in this case, I could maybe just check and make sure I could go ahead and change my window. I need to go at least out to 490. Why don't we just set that from 0 to 1,000? Okay, and I'll set my x scale like at, like at 100. And then my y minimum, let's go from 0. I need to go at least to 237. Let's just put in here 300,000. And we'll make uh, each one of these like 10,000. Okay, and let's graph it. <clears throat> Let's see, I must have made a mistake in there somewhere. Na oh, I missed an X right there, sure enough. Let's go ahead and correct that. Okay, then we'll graph it. All right, that looks better. All right, so then if I were to just calculate the maximum number four, uh, we'll give it a left bound. So go on the left-hand side of the maximum, hit Enter. Give it a right bound, go over on the right hand side of the maximum, hit enter, and give it a guess, just get up there kind of close, and sure enough it says the maximum is 489.999, which is just round off error from the way it computes it, and the y value is 237,100. Alright, so I hope you find that helpful.